everybody. This week on Spangooly, he is showing the 1964 Hammer film, The Evil of Frankenstein, starring Peter Cushing. This week, I plan on making a couple of props and some costumes. So, you know, I have to make that iconic mask that the creature wears in the movie. So I'm going to be getting out my foam clay and I'm going to try my hand again at making another prosthetic mask for my trusty sidekick, Dr. Z. He's going to be the creature this week. For my prop for Dr. Z, I'm going to make the block of ice that the creature is encased in. So that is the scene that I plan to recreate. So I had an idea of maybe purchasing uh, like a fish tank or some sort of glass aquarium that I could frost the glass on to represent a block of ice and then put him inside of it. So luckily, I searched around on Facebook Marketplace and I found someone had a brand new reptile tank for only 20 bucks for sale. So I ran over there after work today and picked it up. And Dr. Z, whoa! Whoa there, Dr. Z. Are you okay? Poor thing. I think he's a little bit embarrassed. So anyway, here is the tank that I bought, the reptile tank. And I think it's going to work perfectly. To frost the glass, I'm going to use a technique that I saw on YouTube. People have used Epsom salts and warm water, a little mixture in a spray bottle, or they might use a sponge uh, or a paintbrush to paint it on to give that frosted effect. So I'm gonna give that a try and I think that'll work perfectly. Well, hello, Billy Barty. Would you like a part this week? He definitely wants to play the part of Victor Frankenstein. So that just leaves one part left. I'm going to play the part of the beggar girl, the girl that is deaf and mute. For her costume, I'm just going to wear a trench coat. That's what you see her wearing in the opening scene with a belt around it. And I can probably make the trench coat kind of distressed looking and dirty. And then underneath, I'm going to wear a white blouse with a dark green skirt and, of course, a red wig. Before I get started sculpting, I thought I'd better try Dr. Z inside of the little reptile tank just to make sure that he fits. Here he is. Oh, poor Dr. Z. It'll be fine. But he fits perfectly inside. However, I do feel bad at the shenanigans that I make my poor little monkey go through. Actually starting to begin to think that maybe instead of the evil of Frankenstein, this movie should be called the evil of Claudine. <laughs> Hello everybody. Okay, it's almost midnight on Wednesday and I finish sculpting the mask for the creature. So let me show you what I have so far. I don't know if you can see this or not. There he is. So I had a little bit of a hiccup. I ran out of clay. And then when I went to open up my fresh bucket of foam clay, I'm not sure what happened. There must have been a little hole in the bag inside the bucket because the clay had already turned solid. It was still soft, but it was solid. Normally foam clay is sort of not really liquidy, but it's stringy and you can pull it out and then you knead it in your hands and then you form it to make the shapes, but it had already became solid. So I couldn't use it at all. So I had to salvage what I could. So this top piece is actually a different kind of clay. It's not foam clay, it's just air dry clay. Um, and, but the top part here is actually a cardboard box. I took a box that I had a shape for and taped it to the top of his head to give him that square brow. To give him the textured look of his face, because if you actually take a look at the creature in the movie, his face is very, very textured. So I used a couple of tools, this brush and this scoring tool, dip these in water to sort of make the surface of the clay a little bit more pliable, and then use the brush 
um, to create lines, like score lines on it on him uh, around his nose and around his cheeks. So I'm kind of curious how that's going to dry because sometimes foam clay will seal itself back up. So I just don't know if I'm going to be able to keep all those details on the surface. So we'll see. It's all a learning experience working with these materials. Um, but I'm happy. Thank goodness he should look rough because he does look rough right now. But I think he looks pretty good. He's got the shape, and um, I'm going to dry, let it dry overnight, and then when I get home from work tomorrow, then I'm going to go ahead and paint it and put some shading in to maybe bring out a little bit more of the texture. Hello everybody. Okay, it is Friday afternoon and I just got home from work a little while ago, but I wanted to make a quick video and show you my progress so far. I got up very early this morning to work on the costume that Dr. Z is going to be wearing to be the creature from The Evil of Frankenstein. So let me show you what I have so far. Are you ready? Here he is. I think, oops, there he is. I think he came out really, really good. I'm very happy with him. And as you can see, I um, sewed the detail um, on his shirt, just like the tunic that he wears in the movie. Um, the only other thing I still need to do is I need to add his hair. So for the hair, I'm actually going to use some of this fun fur. Oh, one other thing that I do want to show you, it's all finished, and I don't know if you can see or not the design on it, but it did come out really, really well. Um, when I'm looking up close and I'm looking through this through my window, I can see all of the little frosty crystals that formed on it. And as you can see, you can actually see my hand through it really well. So I know once I put Dr. Z in here, you will still be able to see him through the, the glass. Um, I did have one other thought. I think I might light this from behind with a black light. I have a couple of black lights that I bought for another Spengoolie Saturday where I painted myself in glow-in-the-dark black paint, lit the room with black lights. So I still have those. So I might put one of those behind here, light it from behind. It should make all of this look very blue. And then hopefully light up Dr. Z a little bit more. So I'm going to try it out tomorrow evening, right before Svengoolie shows the movie. And uh, I think that should work perfectly. Hello, everybody. Okay, it's Saturday night, and I'm getting into my costume to portray the beggar girl. And I just wanted to show everybody really quick what I ended up putting together for my costume. So this is the white blouse that I'll be wearing. And then I'm gonna to try to pan down a little bit so you can see the green skirt. What I ended up making this out of was a piece of green flannel sheet. It was a fitted sheet and I cut all the little rounded corners off of it, cut it in half and I just wrapped it around, added a belt and a little safety pin and I made a green skirt. And I really like the texture of it. It's flannel and it looks very old and worn out because she's a beggar. So she's not going to have fancy clothes. She's going to be wearing used clothes that are very worn in. So I'm almost ready. I have to take my contacts and put them in. And then I also have to put on my red wig. Oh, and I have one other thing to show everyone. I also have the trench coat with this big leather belt that I'm going to put on over the top. So I'll have the trench coat on and then underneath I'll have the rest of my costume. So it is about time to get ready for my Svengoolie Saturday. <laughs> 